What's up everyone? Hey listen, it has been a good solid week since I last worked on the Mustang. Um, got back to work, got back in the swing of things, and it is absolutely perfect outside. We got a nice cool front that came in, so it's nice and cool. It's a good time to work on the car. Um, let me show you what we're going to be working on today. You're probably going to read the title and know anyways. However, last time I drove this car, man, it wandered all over the road. Uh, the steering was just crap. It's really loose, and I've kind of noticed that. I've only driven the car twice, and at both times I've driven it, um, I hit a bump, and the steering just kind of went like this, and the car was completely unstable. So I knew that there's some worn parts up front. So I decided last week, um, or earlier throughout this week, to lift up the car and try to take a look and see what was going on with it. Um, let's show you what I found here. <clears throat> so I've got the car lifted up. I've only got some light up in here. Just visually looking at it, um, everything looks okay. Uh, like I said, the steering wheel's got a lot of slop in it, but you take the wheel, and I move it in and out. That is bad. Notice the play. This inner tie rod is shot. And not only is it like this on this side, but it's equal on the other side. That is a good half inch of play on both wheels, which equals out to an inch of play total on the front suspension, front steering, whatever you're driving it. That would also explain the outer wear on the tires, both on this side and on this side. So, you know, I thought the alignment was off. If I like the alignment was off, and it probably is, but. I didn't think the alignment was going to be that off because the steering wheel is about to fatally, I can't even think of a better word, um, break on me. So, should not drive a car like this. And the, the, the way that the uh, tie rods are worn, man, I mean, it's just a matter of time before you hit a hard bump, pothole, and uh, the inner tie rod breaks off and you lose steering. So, and you wreck your 30 year old car. So, that is no way no. We are going to fix that today. So, first thing I did was jump online, scroll through, and the Moog um, inner tie rods. In fact, I didn't even know you could change out the tie rods on the rack and pinion. This is the first time I worked on a, on a power steering rack. But yeah, they do. Uh, tie rods do unscrew, and there's a little ball joint inside of there that you connect to the outer tie rod ends and go to your ball joints on your, um, you know, on your spindle. So, start looking those up. It turns out the for a good set of inner tie rods, they're about $39. So, each, by the way. So, you're looking at about, you know, $80 for the quality set of inner tie rod ends. And uh, I started looking online. Let me show you what we found. Bam. So, every day is a swap meet when you have Craigslist and the internet. So I found a guy who had this on a hot rod. Um, this is obviously a Mustang rack. And he was asking 100 bucks for it. I haggled him down to 90. So for $10 more than it's gonna cost me to get the outer tie rod ends, um, I got this unit. That is was on a street rod and had about 15,000 miles on it. You can tell he painted it uh, silver. All right, so I got this thing moved up to the bench. We're gonna take a closer look at it. Um, it looks nice. I think the uh, like I said, the outer tie rods are from a different vehicle, um, so they're gonna have to be changed with the ones that I've got on the vehicle now, as long as the ball joints are okay. But uh, man, I mean it's. Looks pretty good. So like I said, we went out to Frisco to get this thing. I picked it up for 90 bucks, which ends up being just um, $10 more than it was going to cost me for Moog um, inner tie rods, which is going to be obviously the piece here and all the way into the screws on uh, to the inside of your rack in there. So those are roughly, you know, like I said, 30 something dollars each, about 40 bucks each. So 80 bucks for the inner tie rods or online for 90 bucks for this guy so 
anyways, it's in really good shape. Like I said, I didn't really know what the condition the rack was in. So, anyways, it's almost too clean uh, for the car. But if for some reason this doesn't work, I can always sell it and use the one that's on the car and just steal the inner die rods, steal what I need out of it. But uh, get to work. And now that we got a little better view underneath here, we can kind of see what we're working with. So. You know, it's it's really dirty, and there's a chance that this seal um, is leaking. So this is how these end up going bad anyways. You know, you can get loose from wear and grinding on the, uh, I guess, wear on the on the uh, rack itself and the, the worm gear. Um, but you also have the steels that go out and start leaking power steering fluid into the boot. Uh, so this has been leaking something. Um, looks like the oil's got... I got a little bit of an oil leak, obviously, right there. trick I do to get these out. Take a hammer. Alright, so I take take the eye of it with some needle nose, pinch it. So easy, right? One out. Okay, we got a 19 mil. Okay, get that cotter pin bent down the back, try to straighten it up. Then we're going to get a the needle nose and the eye hammer. I have the angle I had on the other one. Okay, get that cotter pin out. Keep that there. Try to persuade it with a hammer first. Try not to hit the car. Yeah, that was kind of scary easy. That was too easy. All right. So. Okay, another thing I'm going to do real quick is attempt to kind of center the steering wheel. Um, I got a feeling it's going to move, and I'll probably have to try to center the steering wheel after I put, you know, bolt everything up to the car. The alignment shop is going to get everything centered um, once all this is done. I probably won't even get it aligned yet because I plan on changing the uh, the struts and springs out and changing out these. Um, Caster camber uh, plates here with some nice aftermarket ones, even though these would do the job, I guess. But uh, anyway, some nice aftermarket ones. I'm gonna keep this the uh, strut nice and solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to attempt to get the uh, steering wheel straight here.
Okay. Okay. Okay, so the next step is going to be to get the uh, steering shaft off of the, uh, the rack. And um, let me show you. I've been contemplating on how best to do this since I can't really get underneath and into where the rag joint is. So the rag joint on these cars is right here um, by the input shaft versus being up on the firewall. So you can see the steering shaft. You can sort of see it, but it's right, it's right here. It's down there. You can see the uh, <clears throat> the U joint, then it goes. There we go. Then it goes down to the uh, rag joint, which is right, right there. You can sort of see it. Let's get a bit of light here. Yep. So it's right there, and then you're gonna bolt that um, from the side, and then it slides off the input shaft. Or I can just remove. And I don't know if y'all can see this. But it looks like about a half. So right there. Yeah, it should be right. There we go. Right there is a half inch bolt. Um, I should be able to take that out and pull it away from the firewall from the steering shaft and pull it out with the whole rack unit and then just swap it out in reverse for installation. So I'm going to attempt to see if I can get a half inch down in there and see what we can do. Okay, so to get this off, I've managed to get turn the steering wheel to get it to the side here. And I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a, uh, here we go. So I've got my socket, socket on one side and a wrench on the other. It's moving now. Spark plug wires probably boots are in the way. Okay, so there's the bolt off the steering shaft, the steering column. There she is. Okay, it's a nice, nice bolt. So we'll keep this to the side. Okay, so I take that back. It is an 18 mil, and I don't have. An 18 mil deep socket, uh, half inch from my impact, oh, unfortunately. So, I'm gonna have to do this the old school way. As everybody laughs at me right now. Oh, that's tight. Trial and error, whatever reason, the stud is just supposed to spin on the back. No. There's a backside to it. Tell you what, man. You live and learn, right? Until I've done this before, right? No. It's pretty obvious I've never done this before.
All right. Off now. Okay. All right. So I've got got it loose, but it's still not wanting to budge. And I think you know I've got the lines up here still connected, but these hoses are plenty flexible, and um, it's going to give me room to attach. Uh, the hoses once it's off so the whole thing is moving the whole rack's moving but i think it's stuck because we do know that the uh um the rag joint and the um <sighs> steering shaft is still connected so i'm going to try to see if i can't wedge out this i thought it would slide out once i uh unbolted this and was able to pull out on it maybe i just need a little bit more muscle I just want to get it out of the uh there we go I think we're getting close now. Okay, so I've managed to get the rag joint out. I didn't think it was going to fit through that hole, but it does. Uh, so now we are dangling on the lines. So as much as I love to work with this camera, I'm not going to because uh, i got to put this down and try to get these brake lines off because everything's going to get dirty. And um, unlike some of you, you high-rolling YouTubers, you guys have cameramen out there, so I don't. Um, so hang loose, I'm gonna try to get these lines off and then this should be on the floor. Okay, so it's out. And um, got the lines off, I'll show you what I did to stop the bleeding. It's a little trick I learned a long time ago, but you take a, uh, and that one's starting to drip a little bit, but you take a little extra section of hose wrap a tie around it or stuff something on the other end um, so I'll, the hose is folded and then I just kind of shove shove the end inside the end part of the hole kind of keep it from bleeding uh, same with with the uh, return line so it is gone there's fluid a little bit of fluid everywhere okay so I know it's hard to see but um, I've marked the uh, right at the center of the ball joint here the end of the tie rod um, right on the concrete there, same on that side. I've kind of marked circles where the mounting mounting points are. So we're going to slide this forward, put the new one in place, uh, get the ball joint or get the uh, tie rod length set. Then we'll set it on the bench and transfer over the steering shaft and get it ready to mount into the. Okay, so I've I've taken and measured um, this outer tie rod to where this should be and screwed it down and then took it off and look how much thread is leaving inside the outer tie rod um, when the tie rod is bolted up in the alignment where it should be. So this is not near enough thread uh, to safely run so I'm going to either have to use the old outer tie rods which I think I can. They're, the ball joints are not, I mean they're, they're they move easy, but they're not loose. They need to be replaced. But I think to get this back up into the car and bolted back in, the, you know, get everything kind of going, I want to put the uh, the older outer tie rods onto this one. 
um, because this is unsafe. Um, obviously, that's just not near, nearly enough thread, and you can tell that that is, you know, covering a lot more thread within the um, inner tie rod. So, we'll have to move that one over both sides. Okay, check this out. That is sludge. That is shot. I mean this, man, I don't even know what the goop is on it. Um, this must be old grease from the, uh, the ball joint, but I want to show you this. Look at that. So, it is a damn good thing I decided, it's a damn good thing I decided to get that whole new rack, because this one is gone. Um, I won't even be able to resell it. Um, it's just... If it's got leaks like that, I don't know a whole lot about them. Maybe I'll sell it as a, I don't know, somebody who knows how to rebuild these or something. But uh, more power to them. One good thing is the rag joint is in good shape. It's nice and flexible. And it's actually in oddly really good shape. Um, there's no tears, no cracks, no burns. It's, it's solid and it's flexible. So anyways... I'm in the midst of taking this tie rod off on this side so I can get it in the vise and um, we'll get the end out. But judging by the shape of this and the miles on the car, I may just try to go ahead and get some new outer tie rod ends tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'll get the rack up in the car tonight. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so new rule, um, a new plan. I'm not using these outer tie rods. There's no point. Uh, why put all new? new stuff underneath it and not poo, put new outer tie rods. Uh, not to mention, this one's not coming off. And it's just not. I mean, this has been on there probably since the car was new. These are likely new ones I don't really know. And uh, just judging by the shape of this, it's not going to go back on. Um, that thing's broken down. What's wrong with it, bud? Um, What's it missing? No, the engine's there. What's it missing? What's it missing? That. That. All right, so check it out. So uh, my camera died. Hey, Mia. Um, You're on the videos now forever. <laughs> yep, that just happened. So the. Uh, I pulled the rack out, um, my video camera died, and of course tore it apart, it's, it's trash. Um, I was going to get ready to put everything back in, and this is what I found. This is a problem I ran into. This is the, obviously the stock rack. It's got a notch right there. So notice that the spline input shaft has a, a notch in it where the um, steering shaft goes into. Well, from what I can tell, this rack is all Mustang. It may be a Mustang too, but everything else fits. I mean, the the lines are the same. Um, the thread on the inner tie rods are the same. But this is perfectly round. So, the shaft won't fit into it, obviously, because of the notch. I know, oh, don't touch that, buddy. It's really, it's crash strength fluid. So, the shaft won't fit into it, buddy, and that's that's a problem. Um, I'm trying to figure out where this came from exactly before I go any further putting it in. And I think what I may have to do is find center on this, match center on that rack, and then actually grind down the input shaft and grind the indent in it. So it's not the best thing to do. I want to make some fun, but it's Sunday. And uh, get up, buddy. Get off the ground. It's dirty down there. And I'm going to make some calls tomorrow and uh, see if the maximum motorsports shaft will fit on that rack problem is that shaft is two hundred dollars and it's expensive i'm not going to spend 200 bucks on a steering shaft really I and mean, that's that's ridiculous i know it's cool and all but for a canyon carver that would be great not for a stock mustang so i don't want to go grinding on it yet and ruin it it's you know like i said i paid 90 bucks on it but anyways we'll see i'm going to end the video um with that and I'll let you know in our next video what I end up doing with the shaft.